What's up guys, it's Will back again, and today's review is Season 7, Episode 1 of AMC's hit TV series, The Walking Dead. Now if you didn't already catch this from the title, I just want to give you a fair spoiler warning because this video will contain a ton of spoilers as I'm going to discuss everything that happened in last night's episode and what it means for our group. So if you haven't seen the episode yet and you don't want it spoiled for you, come back after you've watched it. Okay, so after like six and a half months, they finally revealed who Negan's original victim was and sadly much, much more. In true Walking Dead style, they let the true identity of the victim and that incredibly shitty cliffhanger drag on for like 20 plus minutes until they finally revealed it was Abraham who was the loser of Negan's eeny meeny miny mo game. And in true Abraham style, he never cowered in fear, he never begged for his life, he simply said, suck my nuts as he met his terrible fate. Now look, that cliffhanger that The Walking Dead pulled back on the finale of season 6 was just awful. That was one of the worst things you could possibly do to your fan base, in my opinion. It was basically like a slap in the face to all the fans who've watched your show through the highs and lows all these years. And I almost swore off the show. I was so upset over what they did and how it felt like a cheap rating stunt that was really unnecessary and ultimately limited the impact of that scene. I do think this season 7 premiere episode was amazing and one of the best Walking Dead episodes I can remember for quite some time, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the cliffhanger was worth it. Some will argue that the end justified the means, but I think you pissed off so many fans through that cliffhanger that you might have lost a few, whether you actually deliver in season 7 or not. I think it would have been better to just show us Abraham's death at the end of season 6 and then cut to black instead of just, you know, cutting to black and nothing else. But back to season seven, Daryl loses his shit and decides to jump in and punch Negan and then Negan caves in Glenn's skull in retaliation. The brutality of the scene was absolutely astounding and it was one of the most gruesome things I've ever seen on a television show. I'd probably still give the edge to the mountain versus viper trial by combat, but this is definitely not too far behind. But Glenn's death was clear right after the punch because you could tell that when Negan was trying to decide who he was going to kill next to send a message, the shot was framed showing Negan standing right next to Glenn, ready to make him his second victim. And Glenn's final words were, Maggie, I'll find you. Now on Talking Dad, Lauren Cohen said that she interprets Glenn's words as sort of a promise to look over her in the next life, as you can see from this quote, but regardless of what the meaning behind it was, it was very sad. But watching everyone react to not just Glenn, but also Abraham getting slaughtered was probably the hardest part. I mean, most of us can handle the gore, and obviously watching characters we love die sucks, but watching our beloved characters watch each other die is almost more difficult in a way. Sometimes Sometimes the acting in The Walking Dead can be hit or miss, but I gotta give credit to the cast. They all brought it at a very high level for these death scenes. They hit me right in the feels. And something we've never really seen before was Rick being beaten into submission and that pure look of fear in his eyes. Ever since season one, Rick has pretty much always been in control. He's had his failures here and there, sure, but he usually just outsmarts the competition in some way, shape, or form. He's never looked near as broken as Negan just made him look, and this is an incredibly tough thing to watch as a longtime viewer. It really makes Negan an even more formidable villain because he brought Rick to his knees begging for him to stop all this madness. We saw this somewhat with the governor in previous seasons, but nothing ever this bad. I gotta give credit to Jeffrey Dean Morgan though. His acting performance as Negan was honestly pretty amazing. The dude's just a phenomenal actor, and I also gotta give kudos to The Walking Dead for casting him in this role. He is such a perfect fit because you love to hate him. I've actually seen this set on Reddit and a couple other places, but I already hate Negan way more than I ever did the governor, and that's saying something based on the fact that he's only been in like two scenes. So something that I think needs to be discussed was whether or not The Walking Dead went a bit overboard with their display of violence in this episode. I guess some people were upset by the graphic nature of Glenn's death in particular, but personally I wouldn't have had it any other way. The point of these scenes is to show you how helpless our characters are, while at the same time establishing how much of a formidable violent sociopath Negan is. By him killing two of our main beloved characters so gruesomely, we hate him in a measurable amount, and we once again become invested with the interest of our remaining characters. Because if you remember back in season 6, our group did some questionable things that maybe had you thinking like, I don't know, maybe they aren't such good people anymore. But now you all have a common enemy in Negan that you hope will get what's coming to him. The show did a really nice job establishing Negan as the newest, baddest, and toughest test for our group yet. And in order to do that, they needed to show you all the gritty details of just how brutal he really is. By watching all the brutality of his actions come at the expense of two characters we become so attached to, you hate him that much more. And I commend The Walking Dead for not pulling any punches and not being afraid to kill off key characters. Because if they had killed off like Eugene and Aaron or something, it wouldn't been near as impactful. Here's the one knock I have on this episode, and it's an ever so slight one. When Negan takes Rick off in the RV and makes him fetch his axe and all that stuff just to show him how whipped he's about to be, Rick had several opportunities where he could have had the jump on Negan and likely killed him with that axe. I mean, yeah, you do only have one assault rifle to work with when you're done, and there's a ton of guys to deal with when you actually get back to the woods, but at least Negan would be dead and you could deal with the other guys when you get to that point. Who knows, maybe they disband when they saw Negan was dead. I understand Rick was scared at that point, but still, he had plenty of opportunity to act and 
and he chose not to. Okay, so what's next for our group then? Well, the next episode is entitled The Kingdom, which will give us our introduction to the town called The Kingdom and its ruler, King Ezekiel, and his tiger, Shiva. I don't think our group will mount any offensive against Negan anytime soon because their spirits are broken and, well, they don't have the manpower or the resources to go on the offensive right now. But I'm almost positive that Jeffrey Dean Morgan signed on for multiple seasons, so don't expect Negan to die by season's end or anything. But overall, I did think this was a very strong episode from The Walking Dead. I thought it had a very brutal and well-paced story, the best acting performances the show has ever had, a great introduction of an amazing villain, and some very well-written dialogue that was incredibly tense and suspenseful. My only knock on the episode was the RV scene where Rick didn't act because it felt like the logic wasn't quite there. Either way, I'm still going to give The Walking Dead Season 7 Episode 1 a 10 out of 10. So let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of this episode. Did you love it or did you hate it? Or are you somewhere in between? Either way, let me know how you feel and why. And as always, if you like this video, click that like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for much more content like this. That's all for now though. This is Wolf Foxification signing off. See you in the next review.